All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of United Way for Southeastern Michigan's What's the Word Wednesday, where we share important resources and have vibrant discussions on topics that matter to you. So thanks for joining us. My name is Audrey, and today we're joined by three prominent leaders in education and nutrition spaces to have a discussion all about the new school meals program in Michigan. Um, access to free healthy meals is so important for children and families in our community. A few reminders for today's discussion. We hope to have time for a few questions from the audience, so please put your questions in the chat box if you're watching on Zoom or the comment box if you're watching on Facebook. Closed captions are enabled in Zoom and Facebook Live. To turn them on, please click on the show captions button at the bottom of your screen. And now I'd like to introduce you to our panelists for today. We have Natalie Mickelson. She is a school district consultant with the Office of Health and Nutrition Services at the Michigan Department of Education. She has been with the department six years and currently works with student eligibility for school meals. Natalie specializes in working with schools operating the community eligibility provision, a federal program that allows eligible schools to serve free breakfast and lunch to all students. Caitlin Wood is a contractor with the Office of Health and Nutrition Services at the Michigan Department of Education. She has been with the department as a contractor and full-time employee for eight years and currently works with the implementation and operation of the Michigan School Meals Program. Caitlin also works with schools directly through No Kid Hungry, a national campaign committed to ending childhood hunger in the U.S and specializes in overall school nutrition program operation. And finally, we have uh, Katie McConkey has been the director of uh, nutrition services for Liam Fear Schools for the last 25 years. She was named director of the year for the state of Michigan and regional director of the year in the Mideast region in 2010. And she's been contracted to other districts to help them turn their bottom line around. She has a degree in culinary arts from Oakland Community College, where she earned a bronze and sil silver medal in the Detroit Culinary Arts Competition. So welcome all. Thank you so much for being here with us today to share information about the new Michigan Schools Meal Program. So Natalie and Caitlin, uh, why don't you get us started? Thank you, Audrey, and everyone participating in this webinar today. My name is Caitlin Wood, and I'm going to begin with a quick overview of the Michigan School Meals Program. The Michigan Department of Education is excited to share that the Michigan School Meals Program will be available for the 2023-2024 school year. Michigan School Meals provides an additional state reimbursement for breakfast and lunches served to public school students grades pre-K to 12. Hungry students lose focus and concentration in class. I think we can all agree to that and, and know that that is true. And this new legislation allows all students to eat breakfast and lunch for free for the entire school year. Every eligible school district is encouraged to opt into the Michigan School Meals Program for this school year to provide free meals to all students. It also helps in eliminating the negative stigma still attached to receiving free meals at school. And it shows the students attending public schools in Michigan how important their health, wellness, and education is. The Michigan School Meals Program requires a school district to make both breakfast and lunch available to all students. A school district may also participate in the after school snack and or supper programs. However, those meals are not included in the Michigan School Meals Free Meal Program. The, the Michigan School Meals Program is specifically for breakfast and lunch that is served during the school day. MDE created a Michigan School Meals website, which includes a frequently asked questions document specifically for parents, guardians, household, community members to help explain this new state program. And before moving on to the different forms that school districts must collect from households and why those are so important, which is what Natalie is going to cover, I wanted to mention that the school meals program is a federal program. 
And this new legislation of universal free meals is a state of Michigan program. So a school district must still comply with both the federal and the state regulations. So as a household, you might wonder why you're being asked to submit a school meals application when all meals are free. And that's because the district has to still follow those federal program rules. And Natalie will now go over the different application and forms that, that the state of Michigan has and why those are so important. Thank you, Caitlin. So as Caitlin just said, I'm gonna talk about the importance of collecting school meals applications and education benefits form or as a family, the importance of completing these, even though school meals are free this year. So education benefits, what are they for? So schools and households in Michigan rely on education benefits to receive additional services throughout the school year, which is why every household is still being asked to complete documentation to receive education benefits. The information collected is used to provide additional services and benefits beyond just school meals, like resources for classrooms, teachers and children, guidance counselors and college counselors, and health and wellness services. Families should contact their local school for the correct form and more information, if you haven't already seen that online or been communicated how, how and what to fill out. There may also be individual household benefits, such as discounts on internet and phone bills based on student benefit. Other education benefits are district specific and are determined at a local level. These include, but are not limited to, pay to play activities, field trips, health and wellness services, before and after school enrichment activities, and more. The Michigan Department of Education has created a few templates to help communicate the importance of completing applications or forms in a timely manner. But the exact language used in these templates, letters, social media posts, or flyers should be modified by each district specific to your current policies and practices. We're next going to take a look at the application in the form, the two versions of documentation that are out there that you might be asked to complete, or you might be distribu distributing to your school district. The first one, um, here is a small picture of it. It's the application for summer EBT and education benefits. And this is required for schools or districts that claim meals based on free reduced price and paid benefits. So even though all meals are free, student benefits are still needed. Um, as Caitlin mentioned, there's still federal programs running behind the scenes, so this um, eligibility determination is used to claim for federal reimbursement. Um, the application has in past years been called the school meals application, the free and reduced price school meals application. It has the same look and feel, but it has had different names. So still completed, even though it might be called something different. So who should use this? Again, any school that claims meals based on free, reduced, or paid status is going to distribute their, this form to their families. If you are in a partial CEP district and you have students that attend both a CEP and a non-CEP building, you only need to complete this application, the application for summer EBT and education benefits. You don't need to complete this and the form that's on the next page. So where can I find this online? If you are a school district, um, or a school, the Michigan School Meals Program website has the application as well as resources such as letters to households, social media posts, and don't scrap the app flyer to help communicate the importance of completing the application to your families. If you're a parent, look for flyers and communication from your school for how to complete an application, whether it's online or a paper application that maybe was sent home already or is going to be coming in this back to school cluster of paperwork. Um, there's multiple ways to complete it. If you haven't seen anything yet or aren't in these first day of school, first days of school, um, contact your child's school to find out what the process is. Um, these are distributed and collected after July 1st every year. So some districts get those out and available online right after July 1st so families can get ahead um, and not be bombarded with so much paperwork on the first day. Um, student benefits from the prior school year can carry over for 30 operating days into the next year. So there is a little bit of lack, um, buffer time to help complete that new paperwork for the school year, but make sure you're getting those in as soon as possible. How are applications collected? 
So districts can allow households to complete applications online through a secure electronic system or by using paper applications. Many use, districts use a combination of both. You might see these at back to school events. That's a great way for districts to explain or schools to explain how and why this data is used. Um, maybe help people fill out the form if we're not sure quite how to do it. Um, and then again, why do we need applications when meals are free to, free to students? Um, the Michigan School Meals Program is covering meals for all students, but education funding is tied to this individual student eligibility. So it's really important for your district or individual school to complete these so your school maintains that same level of state funding. All right, we're going to move on to the CEP version of the form. So this year it's called the Education Benefits Form, trying to make it a little bit more clear what it's used for. In the past, you might have seen these called the Household Information Report or maybe Household Survey even a few years ago. Um, CEP schools do not use the federal school meals application. They use this other form, um, but this makes a free and reduced determination for um, education funding. What schools should use it? Um, any buildings that participate in CEP. And I see that we have a question about CEP. I'll get to that at the end of this slide. Um, where can I find these forms? So similar to an application, your schools might be posting them um, online or sending home a paper version of the form. So you can complete those either way. If you're a school district, you can find copies of these forms on the CEP Forms and Resources page. The Michigan School Meals Program page, um, again, has letters to households, social media posts, and flyers to help explain why we're asking for this information. Um, information might be collected online or with a paper application. Again, keep an eye out for what your school communicates um, for how they want that information back. And then again, why are we completing it? State funding is still tied to this information. So even though school meals are free, um, funding that goes towards your students um, and school resources is still really important. So CEP, as it was added in the chat, is the Community Eligibility Provision. And that's kind of the original Universal Meals Program. So we've seen different versions of free school meals through pandemic feeding, but Community Eligibility Provision is a federal program that allows school districts with a high enough eligibility to feed students at no cost. So um, we have a lot of CEP schools in the state of Michigan, which is wonderful. And we're probably gonna see an expansion of that um, through this Michigan School Meals Program. All right, so that's all we have here, but again, continue with the questions. I'm happy to see those. I'm going to pass the presentation over to Audrey so she can in introduce our next speaker. Great, thank you, Natalie and Caitlin. And um, we just wanted to um, bring Katie into the conversation as far as having a school district perspective um, to get an idea of, of, of that perspective around this um, new school meals program. So welcome, Katie. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to um, give my perspective of how we collect the data, um, or in my case, because I am CEP, is um, the edu um, educational benefit form. So the first thing that we do as a district or what I do is I need to educate my staff um, because I just wanna clarify that even though breakfast and lunch are free, we have to communicate to the parent that their child has to take a full meal for it to be free. So if a child brings a school lunch or a lunch from home and they just want milk, that's not free. So I just wanted to clarify that the, the student has to get the full meal. And we do that, um, we communicate that to our parents. So in one of the letters that we send home, um, we say, we tell them about um, our district being free. But then we also state if the students are not getting a full breakfast or lunch and would like to purchase milk or other parts of the full benefit um, or the full meal separately, they can do so at a charge and that's considered a la carte. So students must take a full meal. So it's really important that we train our staff and 
when this happens and a student comes up and only wants a piece of the full meal and, well, and not taking the full meal, we have our staff encourage that student to in fact take the full meal. So I just wanted to clarify that. And then also ways that we ask parents to um, get the letter back is um, we send um, in our packet at the beginning of the school year, the information is in there. Um, and it we have the form in there. It tells it, it, we tell them all about what is needed. And we share this form as well, which is on your screen right now and the importance of why we need this information back. Um, Caitlin um, and Natalie went over why we need this information. And the other um, reason that we need this information back too is for grants. So it will benefit your child's school or if you're in the school, um, it will benefit um, you helping you get grants. Um, so we do it through the parent packet with the information inside. We do e-news in all buildings, um, our Facebook page. Um, we have it on our Landfair app. We have it on our website. On curriculum night, you can set up a table um, and have all the information there for the parents. Um, sometimes we make a phone call and um, the other way that we do this is through our program, which is MyStar, which is through Oakland Schools. And the way that we can notify parents is first we collect um, those students who are already direct cert. We send an email to them stating that we do not need any further information from them. Um, and then we have the other list of those families and students that we do need the information from so we know that we can notify them and get the information back from them. But all of the information, um, this, this form is extremely important to us to benefit your child um, or the children, the students. Um, and I guess that's about it. And that's, um, that's what we do here, so. Great, thank you for sharing that information. And we are gonna get into um, some questions. So if you're watching on Facebook or Zoom and you wanna leave some questions for us, we'll get um, some of those answered as well. Um, I have a few follow-up questions here too. And um, Natalie, I'm gonna direct this one to you since you were talking about the application. So do does the application only need to be filled out once a school year, like one time? And then is an application for each student, uh, so like each child in your household, or is it just one, one form? It's a great question. So applications or forms only need to, only need to be completed once every school year, um, but we do need a new form every year. So if you completed one last year, we are asking you to complete one again. If all of your students are in the same school district, you just need to complete one application or form. But if you have students, um, split across multiple districts, you should complete one for each of those school districts to make sure each of those um, schools or districts know that eligibility. Is that if they're in the same school or a different school too, but same district? Um, if they're in the same school, same district, you just need one. Okay. Okay, that's helpful. All that information is um, shared the same way and makes its way over to directors like Katie uh, to process that. And is there a specific deadline for the form? Since I know a lot of this is going out at the beginning of the school year, is there a point in time where someone has to sign up for it? Or if they didn't, if they didn't turn in a form and then decide they need to turn in a form, what does that process look like? The sooner the better, really, to get those in. Districts are, you know, sending out forms and letting families know how to apply right now. However, if there were to be a change in your income throughout the school year, um, maybe both parents are employed right now, but something changed mid-year, you can reapply at any point if there's a change for your household. Um, you might not have qualified for benefits at the start of the school year, but you do later. So getting those paid to play or reduced testing benefits within your district could be really helpful. So apply if there's a change in your circumstances, even if right now you don't feel there's a need. 
And to, to follow up with that too, uh, what a food service director like Katie will do, if she doesn't receive an application or a, a form, she's a community eligibility, but if she doesn't receive that form, she will mark that student as paid, even though all meals are free. And we have to keep kind of saying that it's, it's complicated, but we're trying to um, explain it as best we can. But she will mark a student as a free, reduced, or paid. If they don't complete a form, they get marked as paid. And so for all of those other education benefits, all of those grants they might apply for, that student does not help um, with those student counts. And so that's really the big reason that they want everyone to submit a form and hope to get as many free or reduced students kind of on that list to help with some of those additional benefits. Okay, so just to clarify as a follow-up, does everyone have to fill out a form and do you have to qualify or is it free or is it only free if you qualify? So not everyone has to fill out a form. Okay. Um, the school district does not require everyone to fill out a form. If you do not want to fill out a form, that is okay. That's acceptable. Um, but that then that household is marked as paid as not qualifying for the free or reduced. And it's really those free and reduced student numbers that help with all of those additional education benefits or federal and state funding and all of that. So that's why a district like Katie will work really hard to try to collect as many as possible. And I think this also goes to follow up Katie. I was thinking about if, you know, a parent maybe he has a conversation or thinks about like, oh, I don't think we need it, or I don't think we use it, we'll use it, you know, how would they be able to determine that? I guess that goes along with that, that question and that I asked about if they realize at a later date, okay, this is something we will use or need. How have you navigated some of those conversations? So if a family is not sure if they're going to qualify or not, um, just fill out the application and um, maybe they might qualify and help us out a little bit. Um, um, so I would just say, fill it out. Um, we will process it. We will notify you um, of your category, um, whether you're free, reduced, or full pay. Um, and I've received applications as late as a week before the end of school. Um, that's when a lot of seniors are realizing that you know, they um, are applying for colleges and they don't have a application on file. And so sometimes at the last minute, we, we are processing applications, but we do try our hardest to have a huge campaign at the very beginning, get um, the word out that we do would like the application in. We try to get it by October um, before the October counts. So um, we just highly encourage all of our families to fill out that form because it could help out not only the district, but also their children at the same time. So the form helps with funding for many things at the school in the district. Absolutely. But, the, but the meals, are they free for all students? Mm -hmm. Okay. They are free for all students. And that's why, like you said, some parents would say, well, why do I have to fill out that application if my child's getting free breakfast and lunch already. And that's where my job comes in to educate them on the reasons why we need that information back. And so that's why we do our campaign. That's why we reach out, um, even if it's, you know, um, a phone call or mm -hmm. um, going on curriculum night um, and all of the avenues and the platforms and the resources that we have we work very hard to get that word out to the parents on the reasons why. And once they find out that it's going to benefit maybe their child's school or their child themselves, you know, with applying for college, um, we don't have a problem with them um, applying. Some years in the past, we've had um, a, a, a raffle and those that applied um, they got put in the raffle and we gave away prizes. So there's, um, you know, sometimes you have to be creative on getting um, those applications back to us. Yeah, definitely. So the applications and getting the information is to get additional funding for the school. And the meals are free to all students. Is this every school district in Southeastern Michigan, in Michigan? So it is public school districts. <laughs> 
pre-K through 12. So okay. you might have a younger tuition-based preschool child that may not be included in this. It's um, students that are going to be entering preschool. So if they're in GSRP, um, the Great Start Readiness Program, which is another state-funded preschool. So preschool through grade 12, if your school district participates in the National School Lunch Program and is a public school. So non-public schools are not eligible to participate in Michigan school meals. And again, some of those younger uh, tuition-based preschool programs or child care programs that might be in a school. So you, because they're in a school building, you might think they're a part of this, but it's school-aged children. And that also goes along um, community-based organizations that operate those child care programs. Again, Natalie said they might be located in a school, but they are run by a community organization. Those students also don't qualify for this. So it's the public school um, students. Mm -hmm. All right. That's very helpful information too. And um, just as we are kind of wrapping up today, I would just like for each of you just to share um, what's the most important thing you think people joining us today should know about the new school meals program. And we can start with Katie. Um, I, first of all, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing that, um, you know, what's happening out there with free breakfast and free lunch. Um, I think that, um, you know, we think about uh, food so that um, for our students, so that they don't have to think about food and they can concentrate on their academics. Um, huge advocate for, for this program, but, um, and then I highly encourage, you know, parents to fill out the form because it is so important to the school district. And if they need any information to contract, to contact their, their um, school food service director. Great. I can go next. Mm -hmm. um, Michigan School Meals, the, this free program isn't permanent yet. So as you're out there and realizing like, wow, this is making such a, a positive difference for my family or for my community or for my school, reach out to your legislators and share that with them so we can make this permanent and not just a one-year thing. Um, we saw with the pandemic feeding programs, the impact that it had on Maybe your daily routine with not needing to make a, a meal for your students or the money that you were saving through this. Um, maybe you saw it in your classrooms or the students that you work with. So help us make this permanent by letting your legislators know the value that you see in this program. And my, my final thought as why this is so important is previously qualifying for school meals was such an individual household event. It was just my household qualifies based on income or some other reason. And it was very individual. And now all meals will be free. And so it becomes more of this community event where your student eligibility really does affect the school district in such a positive way. And it's so important to keep filling out those forms, as Katie said, because you can actually have a positive impact on your entire school district, where before you, you really didn't know that impact. It was more just your personal household. So I think that really kind of brings everyone together in, in this great way and provides that free breakfast and lunch to every student in every school, takes away that negative stigma um, I think that's very important. Yeah, that is so important. And I want to thank you all for sharing those thoughts. Um, you know, we appreciate all the work that you all have been doing for this program and for our students and children in our community right here in Southeastern Michigan. It's so important that we make sure um, students and children are thriving, especially in school, especially in our community, um, that we can all come together to do the best that we can. Uh, for them. So um, just want to thank you for joining us today. And before we close, I have a few more updates uh, for our audience here. So as a reminder for anyone in our community experiencing a need, our 211 helpline remains available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it includes resources like food, utility assistance, and much more. Uh, we maintain a running list of available services in the community and can connect you to um, everything that you need. We can also look up uh, resources in your area by using the 211 uh, resource database at unitedwaysem.org. 
slash 211. And if you're looking for opportunities to get involved in the community as a volunteer, United Way's volunteer portal can help. So our online portal lets you search volunteer opportunities that best match your abilities, your needs and interests. Um, it even lets you set up alerts for different types of volunteer projects or organizations you care about most. So you can visit unitedwaysem.org slash volunteer to get started. Um, we'd love to see you out in the community. And our next town hall, so our next What's the Word Wednesday will return in September. So please keep an eye out on our social media um, and emails for our next one. You can stay um, updated on upcoming topics and watch replays of previous town halls. You can visit unitedwaysem.org slash virtual town halls. So I thank you all for joining us today and to our production team for making this town hall happen. Uh, we couldn't do it without you and to our esteemed guests here. We will see you soon. Please stay safe and continue to live united.